ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर नष्टाय शुभद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवती ऋतम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टी मम ज्ञानतिमरांद से ज्ञानांजन शलाखय चक्षुन्मील श्री गुरो नम नमो विष्णुपालाय कृष्ण प्रेष्टा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नमे नमस्ते सारस्वती देवी गौरवाणी प्रचारिणी मे विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चातारिणी जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद अद्वैतगदाधर शिवा सादि गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओके okay. 326 29 तैजसा तो विकुर्वाणा बुद्धि तत्वम अभूतसति द्रव्य पूर्ण विज्ञानम इंद्रियाणाम अनुग्रहः a transformation of the false ego in passion intelligence takes birth over to us lady the functions of intelligence are to help in ascertaining the nature of objects when they come into view and to help the senses so we should remember that our intelligence is a transformation of false ego in passion so naturally intelligence will work towards uh mm, catering to false ego uh, which is Uh, generally sense gratification mm. but intelligence is the discriminating power to understand an object and it helps the senses make choices but the important part is that intelligence works for false ego uh, so it is generally contaminated therefore intelligence is supposed to be the master of the senses prabhupada is saying supposed to be in the perfection of intelligence is attained one becomes fixed in the activities of krishna consciousness by the proper use of intelligence one's consciousness is expanded and the ultimate expansion of consciousness is krishna consciousness mm. so this is important to understand mm. by proper use of intelligence so this is what krishna in bhagavad gita calls as buddhi yoga uh, so this buddhi yoga is this use of intelligence so normally buddhi intelligence is being used for uh, to satisfy false ego uh, meaning thinking that i am the body uh, we are making plans we are using our intelligence to see how we can satisfy ourselves how we can make ourselves happy on the material platform and so much of intelligence is being used in all major uh, inventions discoveries that are being happening all on the platform of passion Now, intelligence is being used for sense gratification but intelligence is supposed to be meant to control the senses but it depends on the motivation of the intelligence if the intelligence is materially motivated then it's going to engage the senses in sense gratification if the intelligence is spiritually motivated it will engage the senses in spiritual activities hmm. so buddhi yoga actually means using intelligence to connect with the lord uh, that is this process of expanding consciousness meaning our consciousness is now very narrow materially focused and we have to expand it purify it go beyond material consciousness uh, so which is why this whole thing mind intelligence and false ego Mm, very important to focus actually most of our mostly when we talk about services devotees are engaged in services which engage the body which engage the gross body hands legs eyes ears etc but actually what is most important is to engage our subtle senses in services because only by that process will they get purified will this intelligence get purified mm, and that intelligence has to get purified mind has to get purified uh, and that process is the whole process of uh, shravanam and kirtanam right if we don't engage in shravanam kirtanam but engage in other activities of bhakti uh, then it's very difficult or it takes time for the intelligence mind to get purified 
<coughs> so the chanting process, hearing process, reading process, uh, reading Srila Prabhupada's books, reading Shastra. This is what is um, required to engage the intelligence. Because when we read Prabhupada's books, uh, each and every statement requires us to use our intelligence to understand. And many a times we can't understand topics so clearly. Then intelligence has to seek answers. So then, you know, you'll use our intelligence goal, uh, read up more, find out how different topics are getting interconnected, etc. And that is the work of intelligence. So if you don't read, so that's why I keep saying hearing is a lazy process, right? Now, it's not that it's, it's not useful, but when Prabhupada talked about Shravanam, he specifically indicated reading his books. Because otherwise, intelligence will become lazy. Intelligence is just sitting and in consuming mode in Shavanam. Right? So, yeah, I mean, if we are so sincere, then by Shavanam we get purified. But if we are, if our, if our day, if our activities are such that we are very, we are engaging in a lot of material activities, then intelligence has to get engaged. How will the intelligence get engaged if you are not trying to apply it at all? Meaning, Let's let's think about this. So, for example, now somebody has used their intelligence and then they are expanded their intelligence and they're explaining, okay, this is what this statement means. Now, this is easy consumption. When we read and we come across this statement, then we have to break our head to understand what this means. Only then intelligence will get engaged. So the whole idea, I've been highlighting this again and again. The whole idea why I am doing these sessions is not, this is not a class. This is for all devotees to get inspired to read Srila Prabhupada's books. If, if this is not happening, then I'm failing in my attempt. Right? Because I want everybody to understand, appreciate how deep Prabhupada's purports are and how much effort it takes to actually understand Prabhupada's purports. And if we don't engage in this way, intelligence will not get engaged in Krishna. Mind is engaged during chanting. Intelligence is engaged during reading. And if we don't engage mind and intelligence, which are the subtle aspects in these activities properly, then simply engaging body in service is of very less use because body, gross body will anyway perish. But the gross body's activities are also being directed by the mind and intelligence. So mind and intelligence is actually has to be given most importance. And that is the reason why Shamanam Kirtanam is considered as the most important part of Navavida Bhakti. Hmm. Naturally, we will engage our intelligence in material things. And my intelligence becomes more and more contaminated. Now, what is the counterpart for intelligence? Uh, using intelligence in material, we also have to use intelligence in spiritual. Hmm. Of course, some services will require use of intelligence, uh, not so much. For example, you know, if you're doing, uh, somebody is doing a flower garland, for example, the person who is designing may be saying, this is how the flower garland should look, overall, this is how it has to match with the dress, etc., etc., has to use intelligence. But somebody who's sitting and just following instructions doesn't require to use intelligence. Right? But when you're reading, it is inevitable that intelligence has to be used. Intelligence has to be used. But not to speculate. So it is even more difficult because then you have to base your understanding completely on what Prabhupada is saying in his books. So this is very, very important. Otherwise, intelligence, mode of passion will just push us, push us, push us into material consciousness. Right? So, please make sure that you spend as much time. Like I keep telling, right? I mean, for many years, almost like seven, eight years, I didn't hear at all. I didn't hear anything. I was simply reading, 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 reading. Every minute I get, I'm just reading. Mm -hmm. 
and of course if suppose i'm reading something and if i don't understand i'll try to hear only from shrila propat right and this is very very important because otherwise we will just take the shortcut we take the shortcut and the result of the shortcut is that our mind and intelligence is not strong and we will struggle so all devotees have to note this that use as much time as possible reading propas books there is no alternative to this there is no alternative to this संशयोत्थ विपर्यासो निश्चय स्मृतिरेव स्वाप इतुच्य बुद्धेर्क्षण वृत्ति पृथक डाउट मिसअप्रहेन्शन करेक्ट अप्रहेन्शन मेमरी एंड स्लीप एज डिटर्मेंड बाय द डिफरेंट फंक्शंस आर सेट टू बी द डिस्टिंग कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ इंटेलिजेंस सो नाउ कृष्ण से वॉट इज दिस इंटेलिजेंस सो डाउट Mm, actually this whole thing is requires very deep understanding doubt is one of the important functions of intelligence blind acceptance of something does not give evidence of intelligence this blind you can replace with this sentimental acceptance of something if you are not using intelligence or if that intelligence is wrongly directed then it is as good as blind acceptance therefore the word samsha is very important in order to cultivate intelligence one should be doubtful in the beginning but doubting is not very favorable when information is received received from the proper source bhagavad gita lord says that doubting the words of authority is the cause of destruction now this doesn't mean that we simply blindly accept doesn't mean that it be simply blindly accept we have to still doubt question inquire and then accept hmm doubt doesn't mean that we have to simply just like not believe in what somebody is saying but we should use our intelligence to to try and understand it by asking questions as described in the patanjali yoga system pramana viparyaya vikalpa nidra smrtiyah by intelligence one can understand things as they are by intelligence only can one understand whether or not he is the body see by intelligence not by some sentiment the study to determine whether one's identity is spiritual or material begins in doubt one when one is able to analyze his actual position the false identification with the body is detected this is this is viparyasa and false identification is detected then real identification can be understood real understanding is described here as nischayah or proved in experimental knowledge this experimental knowledge can be achieved when one has understood the false knowledge by experimental or proved knowledge one can understand that he is not the body but spirit soul anyway so the point here is that when we use intelligence to understand whatever we are hearing it's not blind acceptance that is why there is gnanam and vignanam so this nischayah is vignanam experimental knowledge right so there is gnana and there is vignana uh, if we don't apply what we read then there is no vignana hmm. so we have to use intelligence to understand shastra we have to use intelligence to apply shastra again that's why it's buddhi yoga smriti means memory and swapa means sleep sleep is also necessary to keep the intelligence in working order there is no sleep the brain cannot work nicely in bhagavad gita it is especially mentioned that persons who regulate eating sleeping and other necessities of the body in the proper proportion become very successful in the yoga process and when these uh, when these are told to people they think that it's too much rules and regulations mm, they say don't eat non don't eat karmi food don't eat jain food eat only prasadam no 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 too much too many rules yeah then we will not become successful we can pray we can ignore rules and we will not be successful in the yoga process simple right 
and eating too much or eating too less sleeping too much sleeping too less all of these have to be avoided yukta hara viharasya yukta chestasya karmasu yukta swapnama bodhasya so everything eating sleeping uh, swapna uh, sleep everything is required these are some of the aspects of the analytical study of intelligence as described in both the patanjali yoga system and the sankhya philosophy system of kapila dev see misapprehension prokat for some reason has not explained this <clears throat> misapprehension is means wrong see apprehension act or power of perceiving or comprehending um see so this is apprehension means trying to understand something right this is the power of perceiving or comprehending something mm. now there is what is called as misapprehension wrong understanding and this wrong understanding is determined is uh, happens because of mental speculation mm. or incomplete understanding of something it results in misapprehension we end up misunderstanding and there also has to be correct apprehension now this correct apprehension can happen only when we are sufficiently equipped with the right or authorized knowledge so for example when devotees take decisions in life these decisions sometimes are based on wrong logic or wrong sometimes based on wrong piece of knowledge piece of information uh, some speculation or incomplete understanding right so there are so many reasons why we end up in wrongly assessing a situation mm. and that again that is an activity of intelligence so when we feed knowledge when we read propas books the knowledge bank the then the decision making everything should be based on the knowledge bank we have gathered right and then it will become correct apprehension correct conception correct understanding right so these things are important so that is the reason why again emphasis on reading ಪ್ರಾಣಸ್ಯಕ್ತಿಕ್ವೈರಿಂಗ್ಜ್ಞಾನೇಂದ್ರಿಯ senses of action depend on the vital energy and senses for acquiring knowledge depend on intelligence this we all know it has been explained in the previous verses that mind is a product of ego and goodness and that the function of mind is acceptance and rejection according to desire but here intelligence is said to be the product of ego in passion that is the distinction between mind and intelligence and sometimes it's difficult to distinguish between mind and intelligence Uh, so mind simply does acceptation accepting and rejecting intelligence actually has to do un- comprehension understanding doubt all this is the work of intelligence so deciding right and wrong actually is the work of intelligence but mind irrespective of um, whether there is intelligence or not will simply do the work of accept reject it doesn't have any rational mind is a product of ego in goodness and intelligence is a product of egoism in passion the desire to accept something and reject something is very important factor of the mind since mind is a product of the mode of goodness if it is fixed upon the lord of the mind aniruddha then the mind can be changed to krishna consciousness meaning then we'll accept and reject the uh, things uh, anukulya sankalpa pratikulisa varjanam accept whatever is favorable reject whatever is not favorable otherwise mind will accept and reject for sense gratification it is stated by narottam das thakur that we always have desires desires cannot be stopped but if we transfer our desires to please the supreme person of god it that is perfection of life as soon as the desire is transferred to lording it over material nature 
it becomes contaminated by matter and so let me explain this further so the mind does acceptance and rejection according to desire not according to what is right what is wrong which is the work of intelligence so if the desire is material then the mind will simply accept reject based on that material desire and do whatever is um favorable for the desire to get accomplished hmm? so if the desire is in krishna then the even the mind's process becomes perfect uh, then it will do acceptance and rejection based on on the principles of sharanagati because the desire is to achieve krishna right now suppose say the desire is not to achieve krishna but intelligence is engaging in shastra reading shastra then what happens intelligence starts understanding deciding saying okay sense gratification i am not the body sense gratification is not good for me uh, so i have to now take decisions based on whatever is favorable for my progress you know which is bhakti so this is the other path so when we develop a desire and we also engage our intelligence uh, when we develop a desire to achieve krishna and when we also engage our intelligence in reading propas books then it is a double impact both mind and intelligence and then are working towards krishna hmm. and either of them also can work very effectively meaning like i said even if the desire is not purified but if the intelligence is purified then intelligence can influence the mind but it takes time because mind is very very strong so better is to have a desire for krishna desire to achieve krishna hmm. then both the mind and intelligence will kind of fall in place as soon as the desire is transferred to lording it over material nature it becomes contaminated desire has to be purified in the beginning this purification has to be carried out by the order of the spiritual master since the spiritual master knows how the disciples desires can be transformed into krishna consciousness now this is a very very difficult statement to understand because most of us have no connection with our spiritual master neither the spiritual master know our desires as an individual so anyway this is uh, a general direction is normally given to all disciples uh, which is general generic Uh, material desires converted to spiritual desires but if you are fortunate enough and we if we are able to get personal uh, you know connection with the guru then this specific thing of the specific disciples desires can be transformed into krishna consciousness as far as intelligence is concerned it is clearly stated here that it's a product of egoism in passion by practice one comes to the point of the mode of goodness and by surrendering or fixing the mind upon the supreme person and regarded one becomes a very great personality or mahatma hmm. mahatma sudarlabah hmm. so this is the whole process of sadhana bhakti by practice one can become a mahatma in this verse it is clear that both kinds of senses senses for acquiring knowledge senses for action are products of egoism in the mode of passion and because the sense organs for activity and for acquiring knowledge require energy the vital energy or life energy is also produced by egoism in the mode of passion we can therefore actually see that those who are very passionate can improve in material acquisition very quickly and that's why even in the corporate world says we have to be passionate because that whole thing is about engaging the knowledge acquiring senses uh, karma indriya gnana indriya everything in sense gratification and so that is the whole process of this you know material world it is recommended in the vedic scriptures that if one wants to encourage a person in acquiring material material possessions one should also encourage him in sex life we naturally find that those who are addicted to sex life are also materially advanced because sex life or passionate life is a impetus for material advancement of civilization for those who want to make spiritual advancement there is almost no existence of the mode of passion hmm. only the mode of goodness is prominent we find that those who engage in krishna consciousness are materially poor but one who has eyes can see who is greater 
although he appears to be materially poor a person is in krishna consciousness is not actually a poor man but the person who has no taste for krishna consciousness and appears to be very happy with material possessions is actually poor persons infatuated by material consci consciousness are very intelligent in discovering things for material comforts but they have no access to understanding the spirit soul and spiritual life therefore if anyone wants to advance in spiritual life he has to come back to the platform of purified desire the purified desire for devotional service as stated in narada pancharatra engagement in the service of the lord when the senses are purified tat paratvena nirmalam nirmalam rishikena rishikesa sevanam bhakti ruchate is called pure devotion so the whole point here is that we should understand our senses are generally in the mode of passion because we are influenced by intelligence in the mode of passion uh, everything is in the mode of passion and here propad is saying that for a devotee actually it is mode of goodness and for those who want to make spiritual advancement there is almost no existence of mode of passion only the mode of goodness is prominent uh, and mode of passion life of a person who is in the mode of passion is no time no time no time for krishna busy 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 materially is mode of passion busy 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 for krishna will be mode of goodness even though that busy busy initially will be in the mode of goodness mode of passion because of our material contamination eventually it will become purified and it will be come to the mode of goodness uh, but if we are busy 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 for material sense gratification then it's very difficult for us to come to the mode of goodness that is the reason that many a times we think that uh, our uh, chanting is a result of just you know those two hours of chanting no chanting is a result of the remaining 22 hour, hours of our life what is the consciousness in the remaining 22 hours of our life decides our quality of chanting if we are passionate throughout the day Mm. then that same passion will continue into our chanting mm. unfortunately we don't have a switch uh, we can't just put on a you know switch on something okay this is uh, goodness chanting switch mm, no so that whole thing is the consciousness of the whole day uh, so which is why uh, we have to work we have to do everything but without attachment always thinking that whatever i am doing is for pleasure of krishna now how will i use this outcome of output of this in krishna service hmm. or how can i engage the service itself in krishna for to please krishna right so unless we have this consciousness chanting will always be bad hmm. so we should not try to you know atyahara we should not atyahaya atyahara prayasascha do not too much material endeavor to achieve material things because when you do too much endeavor then that material consciousness will will get drowned in that and then it's very very difficult to come to the mode of goodness without coming to mode of goodness our chanting our devotional activities everything will i mean it will not really make serious progress so it's important that engage intelligence in thinking about krishna in serving krishna uh, in understanding krishna mm -hmm. and that's the only way by which we can because this all this uh, senses are also um, produced from egoism in mode of passion mm -hmm. so you know when we when we can engage our intelligence in krishna then automatically these things will also can also be engaged in krishna <clears throat> and specifically here uh, senses for acquiring knowledge depend on intelligence right and the senses for action depend on vital energy senses for acquiring knowledge depend on intelligence so again the emphasis comes to uh, doing good reading right so um, actually why i am stressing so much on reading is Uh, so many devotees are having so many challenges in their life uh, bhakti life and uh, when i analyze the common root cause is lack of reading lack of clear understanding of what prabhupada has written uh, so 
intelligence has to be used here intelligence has to be used here and otherwise intelligence will just be contaminated and yeah it become very difficult for us to make any meaningful progress okay i think i'll stop here because egoism in tamoguna is another topic yeah so i'll stop here so mainly again highlight is engaging intelligence in krishna and the most powerful process is reading propas purports intelligence has to get purified and thereby uh, mind will also get directed in the right direction because um, intelligence is supposed to control the mind also so make sure that you know we should all try and read as much as possible propas books okay we'll stop here if there are any questions any points confusion we can discuss hari krishna prabhu ji jandak prana uh, prabhu ji i do not understand this at all that the hmm. mind is the product of ego in goodness and uh, the intelligence is uh, uh, in passion yeah uh, i mean is a product of passion so in, so in the mode of ignorance you don't have a mind on intelligence at all prabhu no 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 so what this actually means is that this is the creation process see the creation process we have to understand there are fundamental principles in creation the mind is actually um say we should understand the mind mind is a very um, what should you say innocent thing okay mind is a very innocent thing because mind has been created from more of goodness innocent in the sense that mind will simply work for false ego right or real ego uh, so in that way mind um, how can you uh, can you say see because it is it is produced from mode of goodness right um, so it also has that element of goodness meaning mind ideally should can uh, if properly directed can switch to um, krishna consciousness hmm? if mind was primarily in the mode of passion it would have been very difficult mind is actually in the mode of goodness but because mind is working for false ego um mind is today wrongly directed so it is just saying that from what is the pre- pre- um, basic element from which these different things are created so mind okay let me explain this way right now intelligence uh, the whole world material world moves on intelligence and brahma creation was based on intelligence so intelligence has to be uh, produced from something in the mode of passion right because intelligence in the mode of goodness cannot create intelligence requires that is why brahma is the uh, incarnation of mode of passion right so intelligence means passion means creation means creativity all this is intelligence so that is why it is produced from mode of passion mind actually uh, yeah, ultimate goal of mind is what is to think about krishna so mind is produced in the mode of goodness so that when it gets purified it can very easily think about krishna so these elements are made such that they have a certain function to execute and accordingly they are being produced from certain modes it doesn't mean it doesn't have any mapping to uh, or how can i say like for example okay your question somebody who is in the mode of ignorance doesn't he have a uh, mind and intelligence yes but it is guided by mode of ignorance somebody who is in the mode of passion his intelligence is guided by mode of passion somebody who is in the mode of goodness his intelligence is guided by mode of goodness but the element itself is produced from passion because like i said creation creativity is intelligence which requires passion so it's the basic um, what should you say the basic uh, element or attribute that is required for intelligence to function is passion and hence it is produced from passion that's all we, we shouldn't not try to uh... no, no i got what you're saying but prabhu intelligence is higher than the mind and if the intelligence is mind. if the intelligence is always in uh, passion hmm. how will it let the mind be in goodness and uh, think of the lord 
because the it it is the intelligence which has to control the mind, isn't it, Trevor? Yeah, like, but the uh, mind we, is misbehaving, no? No, but, but the mind is. But the intelligence, if it is the mode of passion, how can it control something which is higher to it? Yeah. Like actually, the mind is lower to the intelligence, right? It is the intelligence which has to give you the answers. It is usually in our sense, in our, in our sense gratification, or in, in our passionate mood. It is always the mind which is controlling. Even when the even when the intelligence tells you not to do something, we don't listen. Like we like like a good uh, lawyer, yeah. we dab our fight. Correct, nahi, correct. Nahi karna. Okay. But if the, if the intelligence is already in passion. It will let the mind flow in passion. Now, how will we come to a mode of goodness? I Correct. mean, I so, don't, I don't understand this sentence at okay. all. Okay, so let me let me try. Okay, it's a very difficult topic to explain. See the so two things we have to understand. First is like I explained one thing. Uh, one is mind is uh, doing acceptance and rejection based on desire. So we have to remember this that mind is doing acceptance and rejection based on desire. Okay. Now, intelligence is supposed to tell us right and wrong. Yes. Mind today, because we are so materially, we have so many material desires, intelligence is not able to say Control anything it. to the mind. Right? Yep. So, which is why I said there are two ways. Mind, the desire that is, uh, you know, driving us. If suppose that the desire gets hooked on to a higher, higher, it goes beyond material desire. Meaning, it if there is a spiritual desire that uh, we just get right by hearing by association etc then that can drive the mind in the right direction right now the intelligence actually is also today in the mode of in mode of passion on in the material influence right mind is also so let's look at two situations one is a material person for me right his mind is also in the mode of i mean he's wanting sense gratification that's his desire his intelligence is also in the mode of uh, trying to get sense desires. So mind, intelligence, false ego, all are, are all working for getting sense gratification. Right? Now, in this, of course, because the um, even in material desires, right, there is one material desire which is good and the other material desire which is bad. But if by chance the mind gets hooked on to the material desire which is not good, right, even if intelligence is saying don't do this, the man will end up doing that because the mind got hooked on to something which is not good the desire he it got hooked on to a desire which is not good so even there intelligence cannot actually drive the mind away from what it wants to do correct is this clear so far True. so what i'm trying to say is that even in a person who is in a karmi who is just wanting sense gratification has mind and intelligence his intelligence is trying to tell him saying that see this <laughs> Material desire is good for you and intelligence saying this material desire is not good for you. But assume that the mind got hooked on to the material desire, which is not good for that person, which is like illicit relations, gambling, this, that and all that, right? Intelligence saying this is not good for you, but mind is hooked on. So what happens? Mind overrules. Correct? Is this clear so far? Yes. Yes, okay. the mind. Right? So now I am switching uh, gears to come to a devotee. Right now, for a devotee, the intelligence is getting purified by hearing shastra. Okay, the desire is also getting purified by hearing shastra. The pure state, meaning the when we as we move towards perfection, what happens is intelligence is also completely pure. Mind is also mind's desire is also completely pure. So both of them go in the direction of Krishna. Correct. Now, in the intermediate stage, meaning when we are transitioning from being karmi to a pure devotee, when we are in the middle, what happens is that our desires are still maybe contaminated. Our intelligence is getting slowly, steadily purified, but not pure enough to influence anything at this point of time, which is when we end up doing, taking wrong decisions, uh, getting, you know, doing things as we are being driven by the mind but as the intelligence becomes more and more purified and by samanam by association mind also becomes purified both of them work in the same direction till then mind and intelligence though mind has to be under the control of intelligence mind is so strong 
that will just end up doing whatever it wants. Sometimes it uses takes help from intelligence. Sometimes it just overrules intelligence. So does the intelligence go to the mode of goodness, Prabhu? From yeah, passion? yeah, yeah, yeah. Intelligence is material intelligence is in the mode of passion. Okay. Spiritual intelligence is transcendental. Yeah, yeah. Achha, Prabhu, but why is ego in the mode of goodness? I mean, how, how not can ego, ego is be... not in the mode of goodness. Mind a... is produced from false okay. ego in mode of goodness. Okay. See, false ego is there in mode of goodness. False ego is there in mode of passion. False ego is there in mode of ignorance. Yes. False ego in the mode of goodness produces the mind. And in okay. the other two, other two, this thing, false ego also must be producing the material mind, right? False ego in mode of passion produces intelligence and sense organs. False okay. ego in the mode of ignorance produces sense objects. Okay. This is just the process of creation. creation. Like I said, yeah. the mind is connected to goodness. Hence, from false ego in mode of goodness, mind is getting created. Intelligence is primarily connected to passion. Hence, it is getting created, getting created okay. from the... Okay false ego in mode of passion okay. and okay. dead matter is anyway ignorance so it's getting created from the mode of ignorance so from false ego you all this is created and uh, yeah. this can shuffle around i mean the, the intelligence the yeah mind everything and, can uh, come to yeah every and the, yes. and the sense product they can shuffle around but uh, for them to uh, for them to come like if, uh, if the ego in the mode of goodness will give you the mind ego Correct. in the mode of uh, passion will give you intelligence Ego in the mode of ignorance will give you sense, sense objects. Sense, sense objects. objects. Sense this objects. is the process objects. of creation. creation. See, what we have to understand is, okay, uh, I'll answer your question more directly, right? See, this, this uh, material world has been created for our sense gratification, right? So this is, the, this is how the creation is being done so that it caters to our sense gratification. This is the default uh, situation, right? Where... My intelligence is passionate, mind produced from ego, false ego, working for false ego, and sense objects are also being used for sense gratification. This is the default environment in which the creation is happening. Now, for us to get out of this, all these mind, intelligence, false ego have to um, start getting purified. Right? Whatever be the state of creation, that is for a person who wants to enjoy this material world. For a person who doesn't want to enjoy the material world, mind has to become purified, come to goodness. Intelligence has to get purified, come to goodness. Uh, and sense gratification has to go. Now, all this will happen when person comes to mode of goodness. And then when he transcends mode of goodness to Shuddha Sattva, then he, he can achieve Krishna. Right? But the default creation is geared towards sense gratification. And hence, these things are being produced the way they are being produced. Is this clear? It's slightly complicated, I think. It is complicated, Prabhu, but I, I get a very vague. It's better than what I started with. It's yeah. I will be, I need a few, few more. Yeah, maybe, more. you know, just maybe I'll just yeah. summarize in one statement again, just you can think about this. The creation is geared or facilitate, is for facilitating our sense gratification. The way the mind, intelligence, and sense objects are being produced, they are being produced in the in a way that are most conducive for sense gratification. But they are not conducive for getting out of sense gratification. So the process of uh, bhakti or you know any of the yoga processes, what they are doing is they are taking the mind, intelligence from their contaminated and even false ego from their contaminated state to the pure state, right? And when we go into the pure state, this is not the design of the creation. This is against the design of the creation because the design of creation was for primarily yes, sense gratification. Sense gratification. But there is a hidden in intent of creation, which is to actually get out of this sense gratification. It is a hidden agenda of the creation, right? Lord created his material world so that we can suffer, come to our senses and then get out of this material world. Now, the mind intelligence are also designed in such a way that they can transition from this state of being uh, working for sense gratification to the state of taking us out of this material world. Yes, true. Okay. So that's why yes. I said it's, it's uh, bhakti works so uh, what, imperceptibly. Against, against, yes. Right? Against, it's so, against you know, the plan. Yeah, so imperceptibly that the default design is overridden. 
right? And the mind intelligence go towards uh, in a direction which can actually help us go out of this material world. Uh, but the creation, default creation is such that it is favorable for sense gratification. Anyway, we can yes, we can see if we can. Yeah. Yes, sir. thank you. That's why this whole creation business, you know, uh, is like generally. Yes, yes sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Vancha Kalpatru Bhishta Kripa Sindh Bhavacha Pati Rana Bhane Bhavishnu Bhyo Namo 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 Namo